We okay. can't. Last week we couldn't do this because um, I had to go to TikTok. So for some reason it wasn't allowing me to chat with people. Anyway, Weird. how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well, man. I'm doing all right. I uh, uh, yeah, it's it's my Wednesday, so Wednesday's like my like chill day. I, I you know if if I can get away with it, I try to chill on Wednesdays. What I'm happens like, on other days? That's oh, it's just cr craziness. The Twitch <laughs> streaming and studio time and, and okay. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, my kids get out of school early on Wednesdays too. And my wife tends to like to take them to Knott's Berry Farm to ride roller coasters and stuff. Is that what they have at Knott's Berry Farm? They do. Roller coasters and funnel cake. Funnel cake. I love funnel cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they'll come back in about... Uh, five hours and they'll be all wired on funnel cake and roller coasters. And then I got to try to sit them down and get them to do their homework. Fantastic. The life yeah, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> the rock and roll lifestyle is alive and well. So for those of you that don't know Scott, Scott's career began in a, a band called Real Big Fish, who had a lot of success um, uh, back in the day. Do you want to go through Like you're, you're like a pretty well-known figure in the ska circle and the west coast um ska scene correct yeah i mean strangely enough it's a weird thing to say that like you know you are you're the guy that you've made <laughs> that you've made an impression such, such a large impression on like a, a genre of music that um the name is recognizable especially yeah it's i was i actually just was at a family function um a couple of days ago on in, uh, in portland and um yeah, and we were just, they were like, how are you doing? And I was like, I'm doing well. I'm getting, you know, because getting back to work and stuff. And um, and they were, you know, and it, these are people I haven't seen in probably 25 years. And and um, and we just somehow, the, the you know, the, the the subject of, you know, ska music and the whole nine yards. And then we started to talk about the, um, the movie that uh, was made, the ska documentary that was made in uh, 2018, 2019. And how weird it was to sit there and watch a movie with a, a, a sizable chunk of your life in it. Yeah, you know. So when did you, when did you was little Little Man Band came a little later, correct? Am I? Yeah, yeah. yeah the Little Man Band was was after Real Big Fish. That was like when we kind of needed a, a little bit of a, a of a break. Okay, so what was uh, when did uh, Real Big Fish form and? Um, what was kind of your role in, uh, in the band? For the well, Real Big Fish initially started in, in 92 or 93. Um, I didn't join until the end of 94. Uh, but, and it wasn't a ska band per se until, until around 94. Before it was kind of like a, like a white boy funk band. Um, <laughs> Yeah, as many, many high school bands tend to start, um, especially in the 90s. Uh, they wanted to be like R.E.M. and like, um, you know, Chili Peppers were big then. And, and not that they're not big now, obviously, but um, so that's kind of way it started. And then uh, the ska started to kind of make its way in and the, the, the ska scene in Orange County started to really start uh, take off. And, and um, um, there were a bunch of bands at that time the most notable i could think of was, no doubt was in that scene too right yeah so it was like no doubt sublime um uh hepcat um i mean uh um fishbone was la but um still you know still counts i, I think as like part of the southern california uh, ska scene um and the cool thing was is yeah like ska and punk kind of seemed to to blend together in, in at that time too so you know, so, there was a lot. Of, I mean, because like Northern California, you had the like Op Ivy and stuff like that that were doing that kind of ska punk. But yeah. And so, yeah, the 90s was when it really, I think it was like around 2000, or 95 when things started to really take off for us. And um, from there, so you, you spent years touring. Um, you had, uh, I, I mean, I feel like most people who weren't born when, who are in, when this happened, <laughs> right, right. but uh, um, yeah, you had a massive hit, toured all over the world, and um, at some point you left the band, and uh, you formed a Littlest Man Band, um, 
maybe it was that during uh, a little bit after i guess no i mean i was still in the band when i was doing littlest man band um i was just we had we uh, we had just after we did our third album called cheer up um things were intense i mean you know it's it's a rough business as you know like yeah and um you know you're talking about you're mixing you know artistry with commerce and there's an artistry side to it and a commerce side to it and sometimes the two butt heads in fact relatively frequently um and then you know i mean when it becomes also a business that you have to take care of and people start to think about you know what they're getting out of things it just everything got really intense mm -hmm. and um and i think uh we all needed to find some space that was our own and so i started my band the littlest man band aaron our lead singer and guitarist uh started his, a band called the forces of evil and so like when we weren't touring with wheel big fish we were playing shows and touring with these other bands um you know because we didn't have enough to Is do it, yeah of yeah. course um so i'm gonna fast forward so you, uh we met in brooklyn worked mm -hmm. on for a while um and play some shows and they're a blast um yeah and uh you, during covid you moved west and um w currently um i spoke to you a little the other day but uh your main focus has been twitch is that is that correct well just while we were waiting for the world to be able to open up yeah. you know what i mean like um while like we couldn't play shows when i when we moved when i moved back it was in july of last year Mm -hmm. So that was kind of in, in the midst of it. Nothing was open. And so we were trying to figure out a place where we could still feel like we were developing a community and reaching out to people. Um, but, uh, the, and YouTube didn't feel like the thing. Um, and, but we wanted to also kind of make it like a show. Yeah. You know? And so when we, we came across Twitch and, I mean, it took it took us some time, most definitely. But we we found. I mean, the Twitch community is unbelievably um, supportive and open. I mean, there's like it's it's not because it's not just video game people and musicians. There's like animators for um, uh, Cartoon Network or have their own shows on there, and there's mm -hmm. all this crazy stuff. And people just it's kind of a let's throw things at the wall and see what sticks situation, which. And it's kind of where, yeah, for me, it's like, it's, it's for finding things that are uncategorizable and unique and you're not necessarily, uh, uh, like there, you feel like you can make more mistakes and people will welcome the, the, the open-endedness of it. You know <laughs> what I mean? The looseness of it. Cause I never know what I'm going to do. Like I stream for about two to three hours, two to three times a week. Um, <laughs> Are talking during that time i i haven't i don't have switch like it's a, yeah, yeah yeah well yeah so it's like sometimes uh it's it's i talk there's some talking and storytelling and then like, interacting because there's a chat on the side so it's, it's like this but there's a scroll of pe people going by and so you're talking with people in the chat and they have uh they and there's a re song request list that i've been building up so you and... request it all the time I guess. yeah that's awesome yeah yeah, so I mean, like, I have a, a, almost 110 tunes, and it's all memorized. Like, I don't use any any lyric sheets, any chord charts, anything. That's wild. It's all memorized. And so when I, it takes me a long time to add stuff, especially now, because I've got, like, so, for a while, it was just Twitch. And so I could spend my week um, focusing on adding tunes in. But now it's like I have to try to do it intermittently and make sure that it's in the brain. Like there's certain songs I still just don't have completely. Like uh, Beware of Darkness by George Harrison just doesn't, the lyrics just don't want to stick in my brain in, in the right order. So I'm like, I got to sometimes look. Well, um, that's still impressive, nonetheless. Um, I, uh, so running towards, running out of time, I try to keep this short, but um, I, have a couple, I had a few questions for you. Um, what, one, um, that I'm curious about too is where do you think the current state of ska currently stands as a job? I mean, I think it's actually having a really nice, uh, um, uh, flux right now. I mean, there's, it's always, it never goes away. It just kind of leaves like the purview of, of people. 
but um yeah there's a lot of really great ska bands right now a lot of younger cats and like um and the scene has changed a lot because um we're celebrating different you know like we're really celebrating a lot more diversity um not just uh, culturally but also you know with gender fluidity and stuff like that and so it's like we're it's neat to see um something that was designed as a music for you know unity and and revolution and inclusivity to like really be spreading out and um it's 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 great i mean there's bands we there's uh bands that stick out in my mind are bands like we are the union um uh there's a there's a great record label called bad time records um, and it's got like, We Are The Union, uh, Kill Lincoln, Cat Bite, uh, Bad Operation. And then there's some stuff, I mean, in Southern California, we've got uh, Bite Me Bambi and um, uh, uh, Half Past Two. And, um, and then even through the pandemic, there were these larger like conglomerates of like ska band, people from all over the country making bands with each other. And like, you would record different parts and, there's this, there's this big thing and they, what is the name? I don't know where, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but um, yeah, it seems to be really like uh, getting, I think because we're in sort of a late nineties, early two thousands uh, retro right now as it's people are really remembering that like Ska's, Ska's a beautiful thing and, it, and it's important. And for some reason it didn't get taken seriously for a long time. And I feel like it, it, it needs, it's it like, Everywhere else in the world, ska and reggae is super important. I don't know why it's not in the U.S. Awesome. Um, okay, anything else we should touch on? I, I uh, got to keep it keep it short. I, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I didn't. Yeah, if, if anybody's intrigued, I mean, come and check it out at twitch.tv forward slash Scott Kloppenstein. And um, we're getting out and we're playing shows and we're doing backyard shows. And I'm in the studio right now with uh, John Avila from Oingo Boingo recording some more music. And I'm using guys like Tony Austin from Kamasi Washington's band and Dennis Ham from Thundercat uh, have been joining me in the studio. And it's been and Ed Campworth from uh, Long Beach Dev All Stars is also there. And it's it's been really great. Oh, yeah. I uh, can't wait to hear it. Um, and also you're on Spotify. So people. Oh, have- yeah. Last thing you have out is Islands in the Stream cover, which is pretty dope. Oh, um, yeah. That was like a joke that turned into something really fantastic. It sounds great. Um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, thank you for joining me. Yeah, yeah, brother. Hey, good to see you. You too. And uh, talk soon. <laughs> All right, man. I'll talk to you later. Have a good one. Later. Bye-bye. Um, later. Um, okay. So now, I think, Mothika, if you could request, then I will put you in um i think that's how it works right there you go there she is hopefully this goes through everything works smoothly yes we did oh. it. hey how's it going it's been probably three years or whatever yeah it's been a long time a long time let's just put it that way but uh, on Saw line, my my first boyfriend, one of my first boyfriends, was in a ska band. Really? And you opened up for Sublime. The with Rome or? Yeah, yeah. Is that the zoo? <laughs> yeah. Um, that's cool. Yeah, yes. Scott has like interesting stories from that whole period of. Uh, there's like so many characters in one scene at one time. Um, that's- yeah, how are you? You're in LA now, currently? I am, yeah. I moved to LA right before the pandemic, so it's been weird. <laughs> it's been weird. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you were, but you were also at home for a little bit, if I remember correctly. Yeah. A long time, yeah, like six months I went back to my parents' house. How was that? <laughs> it was good. I mean, it was like, it was good. I was bored enough to make a TikTok, and that proved to be like the thing that really helped my music get out there. So, yeah. I was like a bit like you know, um, because I've known you for a long time, and I know you work your ass off to, you know, get your music out there, and you're, you're very like hands on about the whole thing. Um, and it's weird to go on TikTok all of a sudden, you like pop up, and, and you're, you have like 
hundreds of thousands of likes and stuff. And I was like, that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> and and your music also. Yeah, that's been a weird experience as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't have like, uh, I don't know how that happened. Probably just like a couple of tastemakers used it and it spread from there. But um, yeah, how, how did that start for you? The whole TikTok? Um, yeah, I mean, I was just like really bored and uh, was just at my parents' house. And I, honestly, I, I was just making really dumb videos. I made like hundreds of videos during quarantine, like a lot. Um, and then I kind of started figuring out how to share my music although a lot of what I post isn't my music um and yeah so it was a weird time because I feel like I was celebrating like finally kind of having a little bit of success while the whole world was like shut down and like mm -hmm. um strange right and you're like in your bedroom and you're like this is happening and there's no one around you you're like <laughs> I know, well also because you know when you met me I was drinking heavily yeah heavily um and so i like got sober right before the quarantine so my first year of sobriety was celebrated like with a cupcake like by myself like in quarantine at my mom's house and i'm like this is not what i thought but <laughs> it must be like uh like good for sobriety not to have any of these outside factors being like let's go out to this bar and stuff like you know you're oh, just... yeah. yeah i kind of just like it was like you know for the first six months of me not drinking, I was in the real world. And then I just spent the rest in quarantine. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. So how did you, uh, like, how did you kind of land on your, like, how do you come up with TikToks? You're so, you're mm -hmm. so, like, how does that come about? Do you just sit there and spend hours brainstorming? Like, what, what is the, I spend like, hours watching TikToks. Okay. But, um, yeah, no, I just watch, uh, because usually TikTok is very, like, conversational. It's, like, whatever is trending, what sound is being used. Um, so I'll, like, save little videos to make. But, like, it's very random what will work. Like, I just I just post whatever I, idea I have and then don't have any, like, attachment to if it does well. Because... <laughs> you never know it's like those algorithms are crazy yeah um it uh you recently did something with them that weirdly enough you worked kind of with my brother there he, he started working there but this what weird cro weird path crossing wait who's your brother steven oh i don't know if he dealt directly with you but he was part of that whatever series you did um oh. But like that's so weird because he didn't he doesn't know I knew you and I was he's like he's like I had this artist Mothika and I was like I know her. <laughs> that's cool. Um, cool. Uh, so what are you currently like working? On? You're working on an album now or getting ready to? Yeah. So the album is being mixed, which is the least fun part of mm -hmm. any song. Um, because then I just have to finish it. But um, yes, yeah, so it's being mixed right now. My I'm shooting a music video in two days and the album cover in like a week after that. <laughs> um, and it's like, it's definitely, considering all of my album covers have been shot for like $50, like in a garage, like I'm actually gonna have like, a set and like a makeup person it's like it's gonna be like a thing so i'm excited um what so you, most of your career you've been like i know you've been independent and you've you've had managers from time to time but like you pretty much have gone with your gut and like done what you wanted to do um what is that like now do you are you still an independent artist are are, are you a, you have a publisher like how's how's that all working out for you I don't have publishing, um, but uh, yeah, so I started an imprint label with Rise Records and BMG, and I I talked to like, I, I mean, probably like 20 lab labels over the last year or something. It was like insane. And one thing I realized was like, I like to do things mm -hmm. 
you know, like myself, like, honestly, like, you should see all the props for the music video. Like I'm making myself, I have to show you this actually. Um, and so I wanted to like start an imprint just so I still have that um, creative control. Mm -hmm. and I made this, you actually, I think you'll like it. Wait, can I flip my screen? I don't know. Okay, well, so it's a gramophone. Wow, <laughs> that was, that was, that's looking good. Yeah, so I like made it all like spiky and, um yeah so you came up with the music video idea and your vision coming to life totally yeah and i feel like i i'm still just like doing being as hands-on as possible although now i have a team um which uh i it'll be my first release ever having like <laughs> anything so i'm excited that's amazing it's, I mean, I feel like most people who I, I would assume most of your fan base has come from TikTok and they're more like they're they've been around for like the last year. But you worked your you were like doing this for years. You were releasing music. I remember you struggling with so many producers and so <laughs> many writers. Um, so it's pretty amazing. It's been a journey. I know it, it's, uh, it's, it's been funny. Like I, I'm glad, I'm not, <laughs> okay. I was gonna say I was glad the pandemic happened, but no, I'm not glad that it happened. <laughs> but I'm glad it like humbled <laughs> to like be able to do other things because before, um, you know, TikTok or whatever, I felt like, like nothing is working for me. Like this <laughs> industry is not like feeling me like I was like I'm just gonna quit I don't know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna like teach social media <laughs> um so so it's been really cool and also I wanted to say my album um so there's this theme amongst it that it has these kind of throwback 50s 40s sounds uh -huh. and producer I heard kind of like do a spin on an old timey sound so it feels very full circle to talk to you now because I have a hint of that in it awesome that's yeah. very cool. um did you have it like produced by one producer or did you do you have a bunch of hands no I I worked with a few producers but the like interludes and like the outro and intro and everything is all one person mm -hmm. keep it cohesive and yeah. i still love to just work with one person but i just like you know the sessions like yeah book so many and then you get a good song so yeah it just happens that way okay. uh, awesome when, when does it come out um don't know but uh the first single comes out like the first week of january okay yeah i was gonna try to have one out in december but with like christmas and all that i was like i don't i want to enjoy christmas i don't want to promote a song yeah i get that <laughs> crazy um yeah. i had a few so actually before i got to like questions um your label like have you signed an artist yet what what's the how's it working um i haven't signed anyone yet my thought process is kind of like i want to release this whole album um just me with the team mm -hmm. make sure it goes smoothly and uh then consider maybe developing or signing artists but honestly i'm more interested in kind of like the creative like you know like if it if I could have anything it'd be like a creative agency where like I love I have too many ideas and I love to like help people with their creative vision yeah. um so yeah hopefully after this album I'll have time to like you know help some other people that's awesome uh that would be fun to like have a different perspective on like not be the center of it you know to be a way and like guide projects. And I never like really get permission to like, cause I'll have like ideas for people, but I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to like 
show up and be like, okay, so I have this idea. Blah, 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 blah. But like, if I was working with someone, I could actually do that, not feel like weird. <laughs> and I, I, I don't know if this is embarrassing, but uh, remember you, you pitched um, a rap song? No, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Um, oh, I I would say, was that a separate night from the night um, that girl harassed me? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. You've seen me in very, uh, very. I was very bold. I am not. I realized also in my sobriety and quarantine that I think I'm actually an introvert that would just drink and then just like have my internal monologue on full blast yeah but that that i will say that rap pitch he'll probably always remember that and it was it was fun it was funny okay wait my rap idea was it um the infomercial one it was like it was called but wait there's more maybe i don't remember <laughs> i don't remember but um it was it was uh it was one for the bucks <laughs> um yeah. okay to ask you questions I guess people ask um they're pretty random thoughts on moths like where did mothica come from I guess I love moths um I'm raising moths they're in hype they're like in winter hibernation though so they're not coming out of their little cocoons like you have a, ca uh, a tank or something yeah I have um four luna moths wow yeah um don't did know what out uh, but yeah I, I i like them because they're nocturnal and like i don't know i just connected to them when i was younger and my album is called nocturnal and okay yeah. well, sir. <laughs> <laughs> cool um uh are you into sci-fi someone asked Ooh, okay my one of my favorite two of my favorite movies are sci-fi uh hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy and arrival okay but i don't i'm not i don't go into like i don't know anything about star wars or like anything like legit sci-fi <laughs> um okay next question who would you say has inspired you oh so many people right now i I really love Caroline Polachek. Yeah. And just what she's done and the career she's had. And yeah, she's like developing artists now too. I'm like a huge fan of her. And I, and I also probably drunkenly embarrassed myself at her party once. And let's hope she forgot that. Yeah. Let's just, it happens. It happens. Um, if I could go back in time. Um, <laughs> How okay? How will artists be able to submit to the Moscow label? Ooh, um, so you guys were talking about Twitch earlier. In December, I'm gonna try to start streaming and kind of like listening to demos. Um, so I'll probably set up an email or Google Doc, but I'll I'll like be like sharing it a lot when that happens. Um, just to start like. One thing I want to do also, mm -hmm. other than sign people, is just listen to demos, give my advice for, like, promotional ideas or, like, visuals, and keep that going until I have time to maybe work with other artists. Awesome. I, uh, well, once I put on, like, Twitter, like, uh, I made a playlist that anyone could, could uh, like... Oh, don't put that. I, I was, I, I mean, the Spotify playlist is, like, 4,000 songs or something, but... I found so much stuff with like five plays that I was like, who are these people? There's so many talented artists um, and that just don't get any attention. It's pretty nuts. See, I did that, but everyone was adding like horribly inappropriate <laughs> <laughs> music <laughs> to me, so. Um, okay. Uh man where's my next question it's kind of hard to navigate this and talk um uh here what's your songwriting process so i always start with a song title first um 
like for example for my album nocturnal i i just i basically would go in with titles that were related to sleep mm -hmm. and i wrote and a lot of them won't make it and they'll probably be on the like like i did a spin on mr sandman that i think will be on the deluxe if i can get approval but um so i just think of like lullaby bedtime stories sweet dreams like that and that's how i start and then fill in the blanks from there nice um okay next question is pretty random have you watched squid game this I, is the second part of the question but we can ignore that <laughs> there are no squids in it um, <laughs> it is very good yeah very good it's very intense yeah, I realized I like I'm not like into true crime or any of this like I don't know. I can't like I can't watch stuff like that and like go about my day. So yeah. Squid Game wasn't like actually real life scary, so it was fine. <laughs> oh, right, I understand that. Um what do you think about your international fans? You gotta... Oh my god, love oh. Um, I'm like amazed to have international fans, especially being from Oklahoma and like not have gone that many places. Um, so it'd be super amazing. I'm trying to look at like, um, an international tour for next year. Oh, wow. That'd be fun. Next year. We'll see. <laughs> I'm also scared of airplanes though. So like, You'll get me in. Yeah. Got it. Unless you want to take a boat, you can take a boat. That boats are scary. To, no, I think a boat is a little safer. Or like the big international planes, like like that are really big, might be safer. I don't know. Yeah, I like turbulence. You like turbulence? I don't. No. Okay. Some yeah, people don't like turbulence. <laughs> worst. When you like drop on a plane, it's the worst feeling. It's like a roller. Oh. You have no control. Yeah, exactly. But so, uh, I'm sure you talk about this all the time. Um, but I know Tally Hall hasn't been a band for a while, right? Or are you still a band? We haven't done anything in 10 years. Have you done new vinyl pressings or a greatest we, hit? We are doing things right now. Oh, <laughs> yay. Uh, they are just being shipped by needle juice records at the moment um i don't know if you pre press vinyl but like the delay is like a year point. oh yeah i'm trying to order some from my album and it might be here like january yeah sure. yeah it's like seven months ago or something <laughs> oh yeah it's 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 wild um we we're doing that i'm might do some t-shirts again because they're like when my friends told me there's over 600 t-shirts online that are bootlegs and i'm like we should just have a couple of a couple of those i don't like seeing people price gouged on stuff that's like a pet peeve i don't like vinyl going for 200 dollars or t-shirts going for hundreds you know yeah i don't think anyone's resold my items i don't want to know if they have <laughs> Well, you keep it available, so there's really no reason. Yeah, yeah, yours, yeah, are like, you know, you now did. 10 years ago. Yeah, Dang. it's a long time. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so we're doing that kind of stuff at the moment, and yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see, see what the future brings. You can't say, like, we won't do anything again, but there's no, like, I don't know. There's not no blueprint or anything happening nothing happening at this moment so yep also def deeply embarrassed myself in front of rob cantor and i tried on his wife's wedding ring <laughs> did you really <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i was i was on one um yeah <laughs> And yeah, that that was a funny. I I I I don't think I even knew of Tally Hall when I did that session. So it was a good, um, a fun time. <laughs> I don't know. Um, that's cool. 
I'll, I'll remind Rob of that. <laughs> no, don't. See, if he meets me now, though, I'm like equally chaotic, but like I remember everything, you know? Yeah, that's good. That's a positive, right? Yeah. Uh, cool. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Um. Yeah. What What are you up to? Are you still Are you producing other people? Yeah. Production. We don't need to talk about me. <laughs> Doing production, some uh, <laughs> music, um, blah, blah blah, other stuff. Yeah. Um. I'm in. A, I currently am in Nashville. I've been splitting my time between here oh. and Brooklyn. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Uh. And I like it. <laughs> I feel like the um, scene has kind of emptied out, um, especially during COVID, because it just became impossible for a lot of art artists to work or su like support themselves. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what the LA scene's like right now, but I no, never was. A it's going. I I like really want to move away from LA. I think it's just a, a fantasy that I like live in a like Portland with in it's raining all the time. Um, I don't know if I'd actually like that, but that's my fantasy right now. <laughs> I mean, you you basically exist on the internet for the most part, right? I'm trying to con like exist even more on the internet too. Mm -hmm. um, I want to do a tour and I want to do the thing, but like honestly, like I said, like I've become more introverted and like, I would love to just to exist online. So we'll see if I can make that happen. <laughs> yeah, we talked about doing like back in the day, we talked about doing a hologram tour mm -hmm. and having just like five shows on a single you can do that. Yeah, we don't even have to be there. Um. <laughs> That'd be hard. Yeah, that would be sick. You just have to have a really awesome tech crew. Yep. Yeah. Do I mean I feel like it's everything's headed that way anyway, but um yeah. It was not reality shows. What? Like virtual reality shows. Totally. I want to invest in virtual reality stocks. I don't know anything. I don't even have a credit card or anything like that. But I feel like that is the future. Do you have an Do I have what? Oculus? No, but I I got to try one once. You should get one. They're, uh, I think they're like 300 bucks. They're, they're fun. Yeah, I want one. It looks sick. Um, I just did like the little trial menu thingy and it was yeah. like amazing. It's incredible. Yeah. Although I have addictive tendencies and I feel like if I were to get into like <laughs> games, like right now I have a game on my phone. I like played for like three hours today. Um, so I shouldn't be that immersed in anything. <laughs> uh, I bought this game on, um, on, uh, Oculus and basically it like puts you in, uh, like a battle, you like drop out of a plane and you're in like a bat, like a, a city and you have to like hunt down other wow. people. I had no idea what was going on for like two hours. I just kept getting ki killed. <laughs> people would just yeah. I think it'd be fun to do like a chat room one where it's like Hobo Hotel or whatever. Yeah. And you're just like meeting weird avatar people. I haven't done that, but I know that there is that. Th that exists. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Should try it. <laughs> um, <laughs> cool. Mad note. Um, cool. Good to yeah. talk. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Um, this was awesome. And hi to everyone in the chat. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you for tuning in. And uh, this will be on uh, YouTube if people missed it. Um, and yeah, thank awesome. you. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Bye. Bye.